Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. If you could have a chance, head down to the show notes and leave us a review and check out all the show show notes that we have linked down there for today's episode, as well as uh, connecting with us on social media. We are going to be starting a series. I don't think it will be every week, but it's going to be a series of episodes, and this is the first one. I think we're going to do about three episodes around scheduling yep. and all the various you know rings of scheduling from daily to weekly to yearly. We're going to talk about planning. Getting a routine, yeah. G- getting getting yourself set and ready for success. You know, all you know. They always say, you know, preparation is you know the key to success. Right. And you know, having us be prepared, even if you're an eclectic homeschooler, or if you're even if you're an unschooler, it's nice to be prepared. It's nice to have a plan. It's nice to have structure. We're going to be interviewing a psychologist next week on the episode, and it, he talked a lot about structure being a great thing for families. You know, and we inter- even interviewed our, our unschooler a couple of weeks ago, and he even talked about how even within their stru- you know, their family, they have structure. They, they do the, they, they eat at the same things. times. They they do the same things, you know, right. in the mornings or the same routines for bedtime. So they do have structure, and we're going to be talking about structure and planning. Right. That, yeah. And, and, uh, you know, what we're trying to do with this series is really, you know, there's, there's the way that we homeschool and how we plan and schedule our mm-hmm. time. And we've talked about that before in the podcast. And of course, if you haven't listened, we'll, we'll chime in when we hit ours. But what we're trying to do is, uh, we found a lot of options. We looked mm-hmm. up what a lot of other families do. And what we're hoping to do with this series is to present to you different ideas mm-hmm. You can try them on for size and see what might work for your family. So we're going to be presenting a lot of different possibilities and hopefully maybe show you something that you hadn't thought of doing before that might work out really terrific for your learner. So that's the hope with this, not to say like we must do all this structure, but to give you some ideas. And one of the inspirations around this episode and, and the subsequent episodes is the fact that you know our, our life has changed a lot in the last week or so. We've had our, our youngest start preschool We've had our oldest, almost six-year-old, start our parent partnership and and all the enrichment activities around that, Mm -hmm. Lego classes, robotics classes, Irish step dance, woodworking. (laughs) Yeah, she's doing all the enrichment while we homeschool here. Yeah, she's done a ton of enrichment, and then we do the homeschool. You know, you know, we continue to do our around the world journeys, and if you haven't checked it, check out our YouTube video where we're going around the world and all our videos, and and you can follow along with us. But you know, we were looking at and saying, well, she was doing preschool before this two days a week. And that kind of ate up most of the time. Mm-hmm. But now she's eating up three days a week. You know, when do I have time to homeschool? When do I have time to do all this? And so we started talking about schedule. We, we, we were talking about some of the challenges. Well, how do we fit it in? You know, our days are going to be a lot more busier than they, they've been in the past. Actually, busier than they've ever been mm-hmm. with respect to education and homeschooling. You know, how can we do that? And we start talking about scheduling and, and getting a plan together, you know, putting things together, at least in the preparation and hopefully you know, yielding success. Yeah. And out of that grew these ideas of these these three episodes. So Yeah, we've got a lot of new folks who are just starting homeschool yeah. this year. And that's one of the natural things you ask is, well, am I going to be a year-round homeschooler? Am I going to just do this during the traditional school year? How many hours a day am I going to do it? You know, there's all those questions. So today we're going to start at the very beginning. And, at the, and the, work our way out. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Work our way out. So today we're going to be talking about daily schedule or daily rhythm or routine, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, how do you set up your day? So that's what this whole episode is going to be about today. So the first idea is let's talk about routine 
over schedule. So right. what is that? What, yeah, what I see people that? that schedule, you know, they have like every 10 minutes scheduled out on, yeah, the, su- on the a super whiteboard. Na- the super nanny schedule. Yeah, kind of. Well, she's she's a little bit looser, but, you know, I have <laughs> see I see some folks who just, they have a, a total schedule to their day. Yeah. Uh, now, if this is the way that your family works, you know, God bless you. Um, but I... I think that, you know, especially for new homeschoolers, you're really setting yourself up for failure if you try to schedule every 15 minutes of your time throughout the yeah. day. Um, so what we want to talk about today is really think more about this being a rhythm and a routine as opposed to being a set schedule. Because the problem we have with set schedules, it's it's great to have structure and kids really thrive on structure and knowing what's next and all that stuff. But if we schedule ourselves too rigidly, then we're always like trying to catch up. So we don't want to get in this, we don't want to make this stressful, but coming up with routine and it can be really important to balance your family. So one of the ways that you can create routine is to just create blocks of times when lessons would occur. Yeah, this is something we we do a lot of this. Right, right. We know during the day, these are the times when our uh, our main schooling is going to take place, and, but leave them open as far as what you're going to do during that time. Yeah. Unless you have something specific that you want to cover every morning, like I know that my kids, they can only do math in the morning because that's when they have the headspace for it. You know, that that's great. It, yeah, do that. But in general, the very first thing before you decide what to put where is just say, these are the blocks of time I'm going to plan to school. Maybe it's, uh, you know, we're going to get up in the morning, we're going to have breakfast, we're going to do a little bit of morning basket, then they're going to have some playtime while I prep for the day. Well, and, and this is important, especially like something that we're going through right now is that, you know, we'll talk about the weekly schedule on the next episode, but every single day of the week is different for us. Right. And we have to, you know, come up with a different plan for every one of those days. So but we have to have kind of a similar flow or yeah. our kids get Yeah, get wonky. Get wonky. Like they need to they need to have a similar flow. So, you know, yeah, maybe you have breakfast, you do morning morning mm-hmm. basket time and then maybe you have some prep time where the kids play indoors or outdoors. And then you have a block and then you have a snack and then you have lunch and those but think of them loosely, not like, mm-hmm. okay, from ten to ten thirty, we are going to do this, you know. <laughs> yes. It, these are just general blocks when you plan to do school for the day. Exactly. I mean, they they could be inter, like I, I like the ideas of like they're interchangeable pieces, almost like Legos. Like, okay, right. today we're going to go to the park. We're going to do some outdoor exploratory activity. Well, because that fits into the ten to twelve block that we like to do schooling in, or right. Whatever you know, it might be. today we have an art thing coming up, and I know that I want to do that. And do that messy thing when the baby is napping because I don't want to have to deal with having a baby on my hip while I'm trying to do art. You know, that kind of thing. So think about the blocks of time. And then really, you know, using the the baby, think about um, babies and toddlers and think about them first when creating your schedule. Absolutely, because I think they dictate your day-to-day way more than... You know, an older they child. do. Our older kids, like my, can, our six-year-old, can do anything anytime. It's, right. Yeah. We, we can really. Our older kids are more flexible, so really think about them first. Number one, utilizing napping time, utilizing nursing time. If you're a nursing mother, yeah. that nursing time is a prime time for something like doing read alouds. Yeah. Um, or, you know, if your kids do do workbooks and you don't need to sit right over their shoulder, I mean, they, maybe they can do that quietly while you're nursing the baby. I mean, think about that. But, you know, think about nap time, nursing well, Especially time. with some of these younger curriculums, you know, they tend to be heavy on the literature. You sitting there reading a book is, is an easy task and it's not going to necessarily distract the baby while they're nursing. That's great. Right. Yeah. It can be a nice, calm idea for you to get some read aloud time or uh, maybe you have a uh, audio book that they're going to listen to of the, the read aloud while you nurse. I mean, this is something that you can kind of think about. Yeah. Um, also, can your bigger kids entertain your younger kids while you work with a sibling? So think about that. Do you have a child that's old enough that you could say, uh, let's just say, for instance, you have three children um, and you have a 10 year old and a two year old and a five year old. Well, I need to do some math with my five year old. I can pair up my 10 year old and my two year old and have the the older child watch the younger and play with them. I mean, maybe you need to facilitate a little bit and make yeah. sure that there's play stuff available, but 
how can you utilize the other kids in your house so you can get one-on-one time with each of your learners? But e- but even in those moments, you could even do something educational. Like maybe you have a three-year-old that you got to entertain. You, you can have your older kid play a game with them while you do the math with you. Like, right, or like work you, on, do blocks. Exactly. Or, you know, it can the, still be educational. Yeah, it right? doesn't have to be necessarily babysitting. It, it can be educational right. in and of itself. And your older child can be reading to that young young child, yeah, which exactly. is adding to that million words, right, that yeah. you're trying to get to. So so that's great too. The other thing is that if you can give your preschool kids your one-on-one time, yes, your one-on-one attention first. Yeah, get that cup full. That's right. If you can give them time first, they're much more willing to go and play by themselves. Now, this is not always true. We have chaotic toddler days. We have a two-year-old. We totally know that that's totally like, get it, yeah. there are some days when we've given her tons of attention and then we say, can you go build, build blocks or play for five minutes? And she absolutely won't. So... I'm not saying it's foolproof, but oftentimes we do find, even with our two-year-old, if we have paid attention to her and done an activity with her first and she's been really stimulated and had a lot of mommy or daddy time, she's much more willing to go and play with something while we work more intensively with our five, almost six-year-old. Yeah, absolutely. I've actually seen this in practice, you know, especially if you can get into a confined space in the sense of like, okay, you have a homeschool room or you have a playroom or you have some gated off living room or something of that nature. I've always found that if the toddler, you know, the two or three year old is contained in a room or whatnot, you know, they can't open the door and just run away. Um, I have found that to be a way that the toddler starts playing with something. Like we've done this in our bonus room where she'll start playing with the kitchen stuff and I can quietly work with my six year old at the, at the homeschool table right. And do some work. But it's uh, usually after you've already done some coloring or something. Yeah, we've done coloring. Her. We've done morning basket. We've done maybe a little bit of swinging outside. And then we've come back in to start doing a little right. bit of work. And she's kind of ready then to do independent play. Yeah, especially now that she's getting a little bit older, she's she's starting to do a little bit more independent play. And I'm able to utilize that. Yes. Right. So if we can think about the preschoolers, babies, toddlers first. Yeah. When you're thinking about your schedule for the day. You know, if you haven't homeschooled before and you're just trying to think about, you know, how am I going to fit everything in? That's really the first thing to consider. The other thing is to be conservative Mm -hmm. with your estimates of what you're going to accomplish. Exactly. The worst thing that we can do is overpromise and underdeliver to ourselves because then the mom guilt sets in. Well, it breeds frustration. It breeds, you know, you know, anger towards the thing that disrupted you and stress too. And then we're trying to catch up and then we end up homeschooling an extra time that we weren't necessarily planning on doing that. Um, not that it's the worst thing in the world if you need to do some homeschooling on the weekends. And we've done that plenty of times when we felt like we just didn't get quite as much done that week as we wanted to. But in general, just start out conservatively. Mm -hmm. You can always add in you can always put in more if you have more time. Well, yeah, especially if you finish something, you can just pop pop a new item on the side. Right, stack. and if yeah. and if you know your your daily schedule, you assume you're only going to get this far, and then you find that consistently day after day you're getting further. Great, you know you can alter that, but start off conservative because life and toddlers get in the way. Yeah. So especially you know, those younger give kids, give yourself some wiggle room. They can tend to be so disruptive as to our homeschooling. Quan, you know, <laughs> they, can. <laughs> they can be so disruptive. It, it can be very frustrating. They can. So yeah, set yourself up for success by don't, don't overpromise to yourself because it can get so frustrating when you're not making your plan. So definitely, you know, think about that when you're making your schedule. The other thing is really don't fight gravity, right? If your kids are like not morning people, then don't try to change the mm-hmm. whole way and rhythm that your family functions on normally because now you're homeschooling, right? Maybe your kids are not up and at them until nine and then and they they do most of their schooling in like the late afternoon there's no rule that says you can't do that you you do not have to school during quote-unquote school hours there's a number of families that love doing night schooling Mm -hmm. you know maybe they have a parent who works swing shift or something and they really like doing evening schooling like that really works for them their kids are night owls and and they do all of that Mm -hmm. at that time that's totally okay don't don't think that just because we're starting homeschooling, okay, everyone's up at seven and we're going to make it happen because then you're, you're fighting the, the natural rhythm of your kids and it's going to make all of you miserable. Exactly. Exactly. Now, what about, you know, doing the same subject every day, you know, from the standpoint of, you know, preschool, I mean, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, they're doing math and reading every day. We've talked about this in the past with some of these are, you know, am I doing enough episodes? 
I'm a big advocate of doing, you know, at least with my older learner, doing something a little bit every day on reading and math. But that doesn't have to happen. Right. We do that because we have found that, well, not with math necessarily, but with reading, reading. that our daughter really needs kind of daily practice. But but you're totally right. We do not have to do every subject every day. No. So don't feel like you have to cram all the subjects into your day. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it doesn't work for you. Maybe there's one subject like reading that you want to do every single day. Uh, and so you want to put that time in there. But um, don't stress yourself by thinking that they've all got to go in every single day. Yeah, like this week, we did, we did two and a half math lessons uh, early in the week. And she did a little bit of additional stuff. So today I was like, she doesn't need to do math today. Right. We can just do reading. And it actually shortened our afternoon, allowed us to play some games instead. And it was a very enjoyable experience. You might find that once your kid gets into a certain mode, like, uh, you know, you found earlier this week with our daughter, she got into a math mode. She was, she did. She was focused. She was like, she yeah. had her eye on it. And you were like, just, let's just I keep going. Just rode that wave. Yeah. Right. And rather than taking her out of it by saying, oh, we only ha have time to do one lesson today because we got to go on to your other things. Mm -hmm. You wrote it and then through the rest of the week, you can do something different. So um, just kind of divorce that public school expectation that I've got to do everything every day because they read every day. I have to do, you know, uh, phonics every day or because they do math every day. I have to do that every day. Uh, do what works for your kiddos um, and don't don't think you've got to meet everything all the time no no we're, we're definitely doing enough regardless because we are doing the one-on-one -on -one. it's not a one-on-ten or a one-on-twenty that we see in the schools you're a lot more efficient you have a lot more output um, you can achieve more in less time I think mm -hmm. that's I think that's a big thing to understand is you can achieve more in less time so therefore you have more freedom to be more adaptive or you can then spend more time on other uh, other subjects right. you don't have to spend eight hours a day on math. You just don't right. have to, no. So, but when you do have those priority subjects, exactly. Uh, one of the concepts I love is this concept from Pam Barnhill, um, who has some fabulous ideas, by the way, um, about natural hooks. These are points in your day that you know are going to happen every day. So yeah. if I have a priority subject, like for, for us, it's phonics. Phonics is a priority subject for us. We want to hit it every day, no matter what's going on with a toddler. So looking for a natural hook, a natural hook might be a mealtime when yeah. I, we know we're all there together, um, a baby's nap or a nursing session. Those are times when you, you know for certain that you'll be able to educate. Now, crazy things happen and your baby has a nap strike or something. We're not, you know, <laughs> yes. I, I mean, yeah, we, we know how that goes. But in general, every day, and this is what happens for us. We know every day uh, one of the natural. Well, we have two. We have two that we work. Uh, the one is the morning basket. Right. We, we, can... we know we're all there at breakfast. Yes. That's a natural hook. And we do sight words in the morning at breakfast because we know that they're there and we'll always be able to educate. And and the other is that our child does nap. And so that's our, our next hook. Now that we've gotten into a parent partnership, or I'm sorry, the parent partnerships for our older, but uh, our younger is going to a two-year-old preschool a couple half days a week. Those are other natural hooks for us where mm -hmm. we know that we're going to be able to educate because the the toddler is not home so well, and, and we've we specifically aligned the schedules to maximize both where right. um the days where you know this is maybe something for people to to think about when they are planning things like this you know we we were choosing to to send our youngest to a preschool we thought it would be good for her with you know getting around other kids getting the activity it's also a gymnastics kind of combo thing and she's you know a a monkey that likes to climb on everything right. so it's good for her to get that kind of outlet and to get exposed to gymnastics but we designed it we chose the days that were opposite of our homeschool partnership days so that we can maximize either or days so you know she'll be at the preschool and i have a day off the morning with my oldest mm -hmm. that allows us three unobstructed hours at a morning window, and if you take her to you know preschool like you, you're able to do, sometimes that's three and a half, four hours of time. Now, are we gonna be doing math and reading the whole time? Absolutely not, but I can do art, we can watch videos, we can do animal studies, we can go outside, we can do a walk, right. we can do math and reading, we can read a bunch of books. I can get a lot done in that mm -hmm. time frame 
because we designed it in a thoughtful manner. So th- these are things that you want to do when you are planning these type of, right. you know, planning ahead is to create those great blocks and those hooks, you know, like almost create hooks to allow you to have that opportunity. Right. Definitely think about that. One of the things we do with our older daughter, we're reading a chapter book every night because of our around the world study, um, or we're reading Harry Potter. One or the other or both sometimes. Um, and we always do that after our baby goes to sleep. That is a natural hook, 7.30 every night. And if there was something else I needed to do with our daughter that was homeschool related, um, you know, I I know that that's a, a hook. So think about where your natural hooks are through the day. But also the learner sees the natural hooks. They kind of like begin to expect it. They, they do. Well, and that's part of what all of this is about too. Building in these blocks, knowing where your hooks are, gets kids used to having the same routine every day. Now with us, now that we've got this parent partnership and we have preschool, the routine's not the same every day, but there is still that expectation. She knows every night when the the little one goes to sleep, we're going to do some reading with her. Mm-hmm. Um, she knows when the little one naps every afternoon, no matter what happens, all of our mornings are different, but our afternoons are all exactly the same yes. because we're home by noon every day. And the afternoons all follow the yeah, Monday same, through Friday. It's the same schedule, the same schedule. And she knows that that is time that sh- that we can homeschool and do things with her. So it's great too because it helps them to be ready and prepared to sit down and do work with us and have the right attitude because it's not surprising to them. It's not like they're in the middle of playing and you're like, okay, we have 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and get homeschooling in or you know, now it's time. Yeah. And they're surprised. They know we're going to get up. We're going to do this. And, yep. you know, and now it's going to be homeschool time. Yeah, and exactly. So that routine is so helpful. Yeah, when I'm taking the little one down for a nap, I... You know, turn to the six-year-old, say, "Hey, hit the potty, and I'll see you in the bonus room." <laughs> right, and she knows, and, and she's she knows. up there, and sometimes she's already working on stuff when you exactly. get there because she she just is used to that routine. So, absolutely. Well, speaking of hooks, you know, the morning basket is another vehicle for learning, and I know there's some some thinking around morning baskets. It's really meant to be like sitting around reading a story. You know, maybe a little bit more communal. And I think it totally can and, be and it depending can be. on the age of your kids and exactly. what's going on. I really like using the morning basket because it brings both of my my daughters together to do stuff. And, and you, know, you know, the funny thing is you'll even attest to it. The writing skills and the drawing skills of our two-year-old has exploded in the oh last my gosh, I could not believe. two months because I'm giving her 15, 20 minutes of free playing and coloring and writing you know, crayons, color pencils, pencils, and unlimited paper during the time where we also do the morning basket with my older one. Mm -hmm. And that has given her, and just having them there together, learning together, I see, you know, there's like a nice communal connection there between the two of them. It's a time when they're willing to sit and work together. They just got nice, all fat and happy from their great breakfast that their father, gourmet father, (laughs) chef (laughs) Eggos from the freezer cooked. This morning it was peanut butter and jelly Eggos. Don't judge. (laughs) Don't judge. So... You know, I think that that's a time to, like you say, they're full. And and later on, if we tried to bring our preschooler to the table to do workbook stuff or draw, it'd be a little crazy. It would be crazy later. But for some reason, she's really good. Yeah, she's really good in that moment. It's a it's a good time. It's before the crazy has set in, and she's still digesting. And and the fun thing that we've done with the morning basket, and if you if you want, I'll make sure to link a I'll link both the morning both videos of the morning baskets that we have on our YouTube channel. We have a preschool and, the, and a kindergarten. We have a preschool and a kindergarten one that you know, we kind of go through what's in our morning basket and obviously it changes all the time, but um, we go through it and I'll link them in the show notes below. But, you know, using the morning basket, we have these great, you know, workbooks telling, like right now we're doing telling time. We're doing some rhyming words. We have the sight word book and we have, um, I think there's another activity book. Oh, the geography book that we've been doing. That she's been loving. This is a yeah. great way to fill in gaps in your day. Yep. You know those workbooks and things that you got and you never quite have time for, or exactly. you know, to, just we have a small we have a load pieces. of we have a load of Kumon books that now we're starting right. to blaze through. This was a great time for handwriting. Oh yeah, right. And I was able to print out some free. You know, we we just worked through a Danelian handwriting book, yeah. and I was able to fr- print out some free Danelian sheets where you could customize it. So I did send sentences from Harry Potter because that's what she's really into exactly. right now from the Sorcerer's Stone. And was it your wizard, Abby? Yeah, that's the one it was. And she loved it and it has really increased her her uh, handwriting skills and things and yeah. it's something that we just, we don't prioritize at another time of day. So, you know, you can think well, about using it's meal also, times. It's also help. a good time to get activities that might be a little bit more of an independent activity. Right. Like these are things I don't have to necessarily 
hover over her mm-hmm. and like work with you know in in you know one on one on one really intensively i can kind of orbit the two of them maybe i can do the dishes while she does it i can clean up the kitchen i can straighten up the living room i can do some things while they're both working on these things so it's it's not as intensive as our normal like math and reading stuff mm-hmm. but it also hits those subjects from like a different angle and i really like that as a tactic yeah i think it's a great time that we can definitely utilize um so the other thing is you know talking about this kind of extra time yeah you know let's not forget about unconventional time that we can use so pool school pool school car school i have done plenty of read alouds while the kids are taking a bath (laughs) a hammock hammock school um you know practicing (laughs) yeah we've done a lot of hammock school this This summer summer was a lot of hammock yeah i would grab uh i would grab read alouds to do or we'd grab workbooks and we'd go sit in the hammock together my older daughter would work on it we're we're to the point where the two-year-old doesn't necessarily pick up the dog poop or eat rocks Right. So it's you can read on the hammock. Gotten a lot better. It's yes. gotten a lot better. Um, you know, we can do uh, practicing sight words in the car. So yep. these aren't times that you schedule at all. But know that they exist as a relief valve if your day hasn't gone as planned. And definitely have extra, you know, those extra activities or workbooks or things in some sort of a easily grabbed to go bag, right? Mm-hmm. When you're like, oh, we're going to have to go to an appointment. We're going to have to wait for a while at the doctor's yeah. office or something. Grab this stuff and take it with you. That's why I like to have it in the in the, in the the morning basket because they're right there. I can just grab them real quick, throw them in my work bag, and we're out of here. Right. It's it's really easy. So when you're planning your day, don't, don't plan these blocks, but know that these are just extra little nuggets where you can get extra pieces done if you don't have time or if your day didn't didn't go as planned or you have a lot of errands to run or something yeah. i like it when you're like de- when you're developing skills that that buttress or accentuate you know accent other things that you're doing i like handwriting or geography stuff or basic knowledge or you know if you're doing some flashcards things where you're you're like doing numbers like we're doing these num- number recognition 1 to 100 on flashcards and they've just been shuffled and she pulls a card and it's like you have to say 53 or 72 Mm -hmm. just like simple simple skills that help accent what you're doing at other times i really like those for these and the term i've I've heard is called found time Mm -hmm. and it's a big thing that you know just technology in general the fact that you know our voices are coming through your ears you're likely doing something while you're listening to this you're either driving or you're doing the dishes or you're making dinner it's all this found time that you otherwise would have just been sitting there not thinking all the time, you know, just like staring at the wall or just mindlessly doing dishes, you're, you're able to learn something while you're actually doing it. Right. And I think we can take that idea of found time, not obviously to an extreme where you're like trying to fill in every gap, like, like no, it's no, water no. going through, you know, cracks. But, you know, when you have these moments where there are, there is a large chunk of time, you can use those t- times right. to to make up for something, especially when you, your kids are in kind of a captive state, like when they're driving. Yeah, when you're in the car. And yeah. sometimes it's really helpful to have things to work on in the car so they don't poke each other. You know, yeah. I mean, it can be nice to channel well, and, and them. Our, and our two-year-old loves writing. So we have pencils now in the car. We have, you know, drawing. She you know, draws she has books while she's and in she her just car draws. seat. Exactly. And so she really likes that. And that's a great way for us to get some learning and some activities out of them. Good opportunity to do read-alouds. If you're doing chapter books, you can yeah. listen to them on audio. Audio. So just just have it in the back of your mind as, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't realize we drive, you know, an hour back and forth to grandma's every week. Huh, I wonder what I could do at that time. Like, that kind of stuff. Just keep it in your mind and think yeah. about how you could well, find this, extra time. And this is on-demand things for your daily schedule, right? Like, oh, in the day, like coming back to the idea of scheduling, mm-hmm. you know, having these little you know, bags of activities or bags of work is a great way to fill in through your schedule. You may have a blocked amount of time, but you also may need to fill in a little bit, 15 minutes here or 20 minutes here. So it all folds back into the the scheduling idea. Yeah. It can be great too. If you have to give extra time to Mm -hmm. one student and you know, you're, it's taking longer than you anticipated. You can tell another student to go and, you know, grab something from the bag. So that, that works out really well. So, so so they've gone through everything. They, you know, they're made, they've made a, a, you know, a plan. They've, they got the block time. They've got their go bag, learning go bag. Mm -hmm. They're ready for car school. You know, how do they start? How do you, how do you get into it? So I, I think that this is all going to be trial and error with your family. Make a rough plan, put out your blocks, kind of think about how you're going to do things and then give it a week. Just try it. Yeah. Just see what happens. There's no way to know exactly what's going to work. And-, and, and and the funny thing is we did that this week, right? Like this week was our first full week where we had both kids in their new, 
you know, activities, their, mm-hmm. you know, preschool and then the parent partnership. And we, we tried it. And the whole week this week we've been, we were talking about, was that enough time? Did you feel, you know, that worked? Right. Was, was, was she in a good learning state yeah. at the time we decided to do it? And, you know, we ended up tweaking towards the end of the week going, oh, you know, next week we're going to do something different and yeah. our schedule isn't even set. So that's the other thing. Yeah. Give it a week try it out, but then also know that you're going to need to adapt Mm -hmm. at different times of year. When you start getting busy with some extracurriculars, you're going to maybe have to adapt that daily schedule. The the holidays are looming like the death star, right? That, okay. Then that might change some things or, um, you know, sometimes with the seasons when it's summer, summertime or the weather is just nice, uh, you know, or maybe you, you've got a family that does a lot of winter activities Mm -hmm. and when winter comes, it's going to just change things. So just know that your daily schedule is not going to be set in stone forever. So Don't you're talking, write in pen. <laughs> are, are you saying here in the Pacific Northwest where we have ski resorts within 45 minutes of, you know, downtown, are you saying ski schooling? <laughs> hey, you know what? That's a... Sight words as you go down the slopes? That's like, hey, that's like 45 minutes of the car, man. Both ways. <laughs> Both ways. So, you know, that's good. But just, you know, don't be afraid to adapt and change the plan. Um, and remember with all of this. Recharge. Yeah. Plan in downtime. Don't schedule you yourself and your kids for every minute because but, but also plan in downtime for your child right we've we've that's talked right. that's about why this I mean in, both of them yeah, yeah. I mean, we've talked about needs downtime yeah. we've talked about this in the last few episodes it's come up as a repeating thing of of getting some downtime and some quiet time for your learner that they're doing an activity or something quiet themselves and how important that is and and next week you know we've already done the interview with the psychologist but he really stressed the importance of quiet time right so think about a mix in your day of stimulation and quiet time so that you know you can really just yeah, like make that. sure you, you give your kids a chance to recharge their batteries and don't run yourself ragged, right? You have to plan time for yourself. You have to remember to plan time for you to pull out tomorrow's books yeah. or tomorrow's craft supplies or whatever. Like maybe that's something you do while they're doing their morning basket. But I mean, you know, think about yourself too. Don't put so much time into your day that you don't have any time to just breathe because then homeschooling is going to run you ragged. You're going to burn yourself and your kids out. So definitely don't go overboard. If you're worried that you're not doing enough during the day and you think you have to school for six hours to be like a public school, go back and listen to our, am I doing enough episodes? Matt Mm -hmm. will link them in the show notes. Um, You don't need to do that much time. You, you really, you know, your one-on-one time with your kids goes so much further than 30 on one time <laughs> in a public school. Yep. So just, you know, don't go, don't go too extreme. I, I worry that some folks are yeah. going to burn themselves out. Um, and then by Christmas, you're gonna be like, I hate homeschooling. I don't want to do yeah, this Yeah, exactly. Anymore. Yeah, definitely take your time in it. It's, it's a long game, right? For a lot of us, like, you know, we were talking about it earlier today, this, we're, we're going the distance, right? And mm-hmm. so for us, it's hard to sometimes when you are in the moment, you're trying to educate, 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 and you, it's hard to see the, through the forest, through the trees. You're hard. It's hard to see the 18 year old when you're working with a six year old, but it is a slow process where every day mm-hmm. you're, you're chipping a piece of marble off and you're seeing more and more of this beautiful sculpture mm-hmm. you're building. And I really like the idea of the long game. A lot of sports uh, psychologists, a lot of um, really successful people, uh, with respect to sports, and I think sports is a good analogy to this, they really stress the process that it's not about winning the championship. It's about the work it takes to get there. Mm-hmm. And the championship is a byproduct of the work. So you can think of your student, a successful, educated, you know, highly functioning individual, you know, as an 18 year old um, is part of that process. It's a, right. it's just a little bit of work every single day, working hard. And I, and I, I really stress that process. We we talked about process, I think, a couple episodes ago. Yeah. And um, I think there's a coach for Butler who took his team, I think, to – I think he's the coach now for the Celtics. He took his team to the uh, Final Four. Yeah. And there's this great video on YouTube. I'll see if I can find it and link it in the show notes. But his team hits the shot, wins the game. <clears throat> and there's this beautiful wide shot of the event when they won the game. Everybody's going nuts. Everybody's jumping up and down. And he looks, sees the shot made, turns and walks to the other coach to go shake his hand. Doesn't celebrate, doesn't go crazy. And he's a process guy. So the fact that they won the game is part of all the hard work they put up you know, in the past. And it's not about celebrating necessarily that moment, but it's celebrating the process. Nick Saban is a big process guy as well. 
and really stresses the idea that there's just like a little bit of work every single day can get you to the goals you're trying to. Right. Yeah. So I think it's really important that we just, we don't overload. Um, we don't overload our kids that we, yeah. we take our time. We remember that, especially for young kids, you need to alternate active time with sit down time. You know, we can't do sit down work. We need to have some time to get the wiggles out, then maybe do some sit down work. Exactly. Then some time to play a game, then some sit down work. You know, I mean, kind of back and forth, especially with young kids. And well, we see that in like writing in, in like writing books where you don't want the same chapter every single time. You got to have like, it's got to change. There's got to be exciting. There, there's different, you know, endings or different revelations. The same thing in that moment where it just can't be the same thing every single day. Right. Change is a good thing. It, it creates that great, the gradient, the, the delta of the change creates the excitement, whether it's sitting down or, or going outside and running around. I yeah, agree with and, you. And going outside is something, it, you know, if, if being outside is not your natural inclination, like for us, it's not. My natural inclination is not to get outside first thing. Um, but we have to push ourselves because our mm -hmm. kids need outside time. Exactly. Whether you have 40 acres or you live in an apartment, you got to get the kids outside and go to some place where they can breathe and they can explore and what, have that what, kind of non-structured yeah. time. It's important. What was that story you, you, you told me a, a little while ago about the mom? She always has the stuff in the car ready to go to the park any month. What yeah, was it? yeah. So there was there was somebody had a Facebook, Facebook a question is... about like how do you meet your I don't know if it's a thousand hours outside or something per year. Like how, how do you get there or whatever. Yeah. And this mom said, every time I take my kids anywhere, we stop at a park. Yeah. I don't care if I'm going to a doctor's appointment or going to the grocery store, we always stop at a park on the way there or on the way home, whatever works out. And it out. could be like for 30 minutes. Right. They, so she has a, a bag in the car with shoes and change of clothes and some rain <laughs> gear. And she's like, we've, we've discovered all these amazing parks because yeah. I look up a park near where we're going to be, wherever that's going to be. And we stop and we play at the playground, you know, or we go for a walk or we explore and then we get back in. And she's like, that's how I meet my time outside. Cause she was, cause I go someplace every day. Yeah. That means those kids go to the park every day. And I was like, wow, you don't have to plan an event necessarily to go no. to the park. It could be, I have to go grocery shopping. Okay, we're going to spend 20 minutes well, at the park I, and then I'm going to go grocery shopping. I did this the other day where I, uh, she, you know, our oldest forgot her toolbox for the, for her, her morning class at the, um, at the uh, parent partnership. And I, I swung by to drop it off with you. And then I took the little one to the park for about a half hour, 40 minutes. And then we went to the grocery shopping. Like it is. You can make it, it is part such of your an easy normal thing, yeah. routine to just get the kids outside. It's yeah. amazing. But also, I see better naps. I see better behavior when they when they much better behavior. I, I think there's just something about the sun and the vitamin D. I don't know it's magical. Yeah, and that fresh air. And I I think it's the non structured time. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we make this joke that our our older daughter, especially, but now our younger younger daughter's getting into it. They almost act like you're the cruise director. <laughs> like, what's next, Daddy? What are we doing next? Okay, right when you're you're not even quite finished with thing you're doing what's mm -hmm. coming up next they always want you to have a new activity for them and what i like about being outside is they never ask me when we take them outside they never say what what's next what are we doing after this they're no. so immersed in exploring T today we went on a walk my older daughter and i went on a walk and we saw this fast moving caterpillar mm -hmm. and she stopped and stared at this thing for I, I don't know. It was a long time. Well, we were, we were, she named him. I mean, <sighs> she had this whole story about where he was going. And then we ran into another yeah. caterpillar and she was like, that's his brother <laughs> and he's going to get him. And so, and, and so she wanted to know how fast this caterpillar was moving. And I still wanted to go on my exercise walk. Right. So we marked where we were at by like a house we were near. We knew kind of where we were at. We went on the walk, we came back and we measured the distance that this caterpillar oh, had cool. gone. And she loved that experience. And it was just, I was going on a walk so and I was like, why don't you come with me? And she was like, yeah. sure. Well, we were, we were digging in the dirt, uh, at lunchtime. So yeah, like it was, it's so it, easy to get outside. It's important, yeah. you know, whether you have a backyard or yeah. you, or you just, you know, have to go to the local park, really get your kids outside and plan that time every day. If you're really good about it and you're always getting outside anyway, then, you know, you don't have to have a block. But for us, we need to really think very yeah. purposefully about getting outside because it's not what we lean into naturally getting our kids all dirty that's just not what we're <laughs> normally thinking about but they love it um and the more that we do it the more i realize how important it is so that would be my last plug just well, make sure you don't forget that time well, in your schedule for the day hopefully this helped you in your 
you know, getting some ideas around scheduling for the day. Hopefully, I gave you some ideas. We we gathered a lot of different ideas. We don't do all of these. We do we do a lot of them. We don't do necessarily all of them. So hopefully, you found something that might might help you um, tweak or or adjust or or change a little bit on your schedule to maybe add some efficiency, add some more capacity, whether it's you know quiet time or more learning, whatever that might be. Hopefully, it helped you in your schedule. We're gonna do two more of these on the week, and then the year. Mm-hmm. I believe that's what it is. Yes, mm-hmm. and you know, hopefully that these episodes are going to help, you know, get you in a little bit better mindset, get you Find working. something yeah. that, that meshes with your family, that, that makes your homeschool work. Well, and that's the thing we always talk about with the homeschool journeys is that there's always something in everybody's journey that you can identify with. Oh, that little thing that they did, or I really like what they did, or, you know, what, what he said. These ideas. It gives you some great ideas. And, you know, one of the best things about you know, when, you, when you're engaging with different ideas and different ways of thinking, it challenges what you, th- what you do. And sometimes you can see something that better and you, you can kind of synthesize those two ideas into something new that, that, you know, moves you forward. I, I love that. I love, I love learning about different things and seeing, okay, that's a great idea. I like how that works. I'm not necessarily going to do that thing, but I love the thinking here. And I think that can apply in this thing. Right. And that's just a great way to you know, improve, constantly be improving, always be improving your, your day to day, your schedule, how you do homeschooling, you know, because the kids are always changing and you're always having to adapt. So it's a great way to rethink about your schedule. Think about how you can, you know, aim your family towards success, I think is a great thing. So let's end this the way we always do it on something that we're into. And we kind of alluded to it in the, in the talk here, um, is audiobooks. So Ariel was able to find <clears throat> this old 1990s technology. They haven't been <laughs> in uh, some museums, but uh, a, a C- C- D- C- C- D player. C- Don't make me feel old. Business. Oh, it is super old. A CD player. We could be talking about like mini discs or So it's funny, you know, you know in the world tech where like that. all I do is listen to like YouTube music and everything it's all streaming, that I do everything is streams. streaming and digital. I just really forget that that's not as friendly for my kid, my five-year-old <laughs> to use. So we went out and bought an old school like walkman cd player well, type they're, thing. and they're great they, they don't skip the battery life is great right they're super worked, compact i did i did get rechargeable energizer batteries, yeah. batteries with a little recharger um just for that but we got her some kids headphones and the library has so many audiobooks and especially audiobooks around early learners right early they readers have early chapter book audiobooks yeah. there are plenty of audiobooks of like the magic treehouse series for example yeah. um right now she's she's big into listening to harry potter the first two books of harry potter so she's doing that um there's are the, these the jim dale harry potter's I mean, is there any other? There's a Stephen, well, there's Fry. Stephen Fry one, yeah. Yeah, I know they should be burned. There's Jim Dale, and then there's I watched some funny, nothing else. I watched a couple of YouTube videos of Stephen Fry uh, talking about reading the first book, and he kind of like patronizingly patted J.K. Rowling on the shoulder and says, "You wrote a good book. Good luck." And then, he, and then it blew up and it got super famous, and he he was brought back to do another one or or two more. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Jim Dale is the only one. So. You know, it's it's a it's a great way to go. They've got like the Princess in Black series. Yes. I know that some of the Sophie Mouse books. There's that's awesome. I think is it Sophie Mouse? No, not Sophie Mouse. I know Princess in Black is, and there's uh, uh the Boxcar Children. There's new like Boxcar Children mysteries, and they go around the world. Those are on audiobook. So we're really enjoying this, and it gives a great way for our daughter to really embrace quiet time mm-hmm. because she can listen to this. And she can either do Lego while she's doing it or Duplo or she can play in her room or even just lay on her bed. Yep. And it's it's really helped her. It's something that she looks forward to. She, especially, loves, she loves it. She loves it. And if she's, Well, we got the idea from her friend who right, does this who as was well. Also, who was also doing this with their daughter. And we were like, oh, brilliant. One of the things this really helps us with is when uh, she's getting like kind of kind of crazy like maybe the girls are fighting or you know she's just... our children we, we, we run a podcast our children are perfect yeah right when they're, they're hitting each other or whatever it's like okay we need everybody to kind of go to their corners and just like cool for a little bit yeah chill it's really great and she'll say you know mommy daddy can i listen to my cd player I'll say yeah definitely and she always comes back 
centered. And as much as I love reading to her, we can't read to her every second. Sometimes I've got to go take care of the of the baby. Um, we've got to go take a shower. I mean, we have things, make dinner. This yeah. is just a great opportunity to give her uh, stimulation and add. She's adding to her vocabulary. It's funny because they're not words we read to her. And I'm like, where exactly. did you learn that word? I We were reading Paddington the other day and I said cross. I go, oh, well, that means mad. She goes, mom, I know from Harry Potter. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't really think you understood that cross meant mad. Okay. Um, but it's, 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 it's lifting her active literacy. It is. Lifting her vocabulary. It's going to, I think, help her learn to read faster because she'll be familiar with, with words. You know, when she sounds out a difficult word, she's heard it before and she knows what it means. Right. And then she can correct herself mid phonics spelling out, you know, oh, this is a large word, but I've heard this word before. And it's not, it's not so, you know scary to me yeah i think it's great so get your kid a small cd player well, you know what did it cost or a little yeah. boom box what did it something. cost you i think it was 25 bucks maybe awesome like a memorex and then we doesn't... and we've been using the library for all the all the cds so you know zero cost there yeah well, so it's been tw- really great. twenty dollars a month from our taxes but that's why well, yeah but um you know yeah it's great and you can get them all at the library so highly recommend yep. that just for ease of use you know yes there's overdrive and all these other digital services but um, you know, I just, I've just found the physical medium is so much easier with a, a child of this age, this young well, learner. And, and you know, the six year old, you may think, Oh, it's a little, little young to operate a CD player. No way, man. This girl knows how to take them out. We've, we taught her the proper way to take the discs out. She knows mm-hmm. how she has to, you know, take good care of them and she can control all the buttons. She knows how to fast forward. She knows how to pause. She knows how to stop because most of those are just icons anyways. Yeah. And so she's learned that and she knows how to turn it up. She knows how to set it. You know, if there's an issue, she, I think she's to the point where she could probably change the batteries. <laughs> so it's very funny. Yeah. Like, I'm a little surprised how quickly she took to it. Yeah. She really understands it well and she understands the proper way to turn it off so that it saves her spot on the CD. And so, yeah, I, I, we highly recommend go old school, go get a boom box or uh <laughs> Or, uh, you know, CD. I was trying to find one at Goodwill and I was never able to find one. So maybe other people are also doing the same thing Mm -hmm. and getting CD players for their kids. But um, it's what we're into this week. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!